Today I'm going to take a look at the equals FD formula in Excel and then we'll kind of model out what's going on um, like we did in the last video I did, but um, we'll kind of show what the cash flows do. This is more like investment growth is kind of what we're mostly going to use this for. There's some other things too, um, but we'll do a couple of simple ones. So one here we're going to do without payments and then we'll do one with payments in. So let's say you put money into um, uh, some sort of savings account or CD or something where you're making some money. Uh, interest on top of it. Uh, let's say you put in uh, $10,000. So that's PV is the present value is $10,000. Uh, we're going to leave it in there for say eight years uh, at a rate of, um, we're going to pretend like I'm a kid again, it's 1988. So we're going to say 3.1%. Uh, we're getting 3.1%. Uh, just so we don't play with um, really dumb low interest rates like we've had for the last decade or so. Okay, so we have we have this, and I just want to know what is this ten thousand dollars going to be worth in eight years um, when I get it back? Uh, so this formula will tell me, and then I'll show you how the cash flows work. So equals FV, that just means equals future value. Uh, and again, you can literally just tie stuff here. So here's your rate, comma. It says N per, so that's eight years, comma. Payment is actually zero. Um, we're going to copy this model down and do it again here in a second with a payment. I'll kind of show you how to model that as well. Um, and then uh, present value is um, $10,000. Now this is going to come out negative um, and I'll kind of, again, whatever you put in, if this is positive, this is going to be negative and vice versa. So in uh, a lot of ways, what we would actually do here is um, instead of putting this in as positive, we would put this one in as negative typically. And that is because I'm, my cash is leaving in the present. I'm giving this $10,000 up to put it in the uh, investment vehicle, and then I get the money back here. So it's negative $10,000 now, so that I get $12,766.43 at the end of eight years. Um, so that's the way you can kind of think of it. And then the model kind of works like this. So then we're going to model that out. So in time zero, I'm going to put um, $10,000 into, oh, not Q, there we go. Uh, and then I'm going to leave that for eight years. Okay. And then what's going to happen is this is going to grow every year. And growth, if you remember, um, as we've talked about in many classes, is just whatever you had times one plus the growth rate. And I'm going to lock that growth rate with F4. Right. So if I'm just, I'm just going to take the 10,000 times 1.031, uh, and then I can just drag this over and it'll multiply this one by that and this one by that. So this is a compounding um, growth rate. Okay, so there you go, 12,766.43, uh, 12,766.43. 12, so this model just shows what the math here is doing in the formula. Now let's do it with a payment. Okay, so this would be more... Uh, like something you're paying into on, a, in, on an ongoing basis. Um, and you can model this a couple different ways. Um, so I'll kind of show you uh, two different ways to model it in this uh, cash flow form. Uh, so let's say um, we go to payment, and instead of just investing the $10,000, we're also going to invest um, another $500 per year. Okay? So we're going we're gonna to take this same model, um, and we're going to replicate it down here. And you'll see that the uh, future value, and again, that payment, I already had it tied in. So now payment is negative 500 instead of um, zero. Uh, and so we will be putting 500 extra dollars in with our $10,000 each time. Um, and now it's going to be $17,000 at the end of uh, eight years instead of 12,000. So again, we put 10,000 in, we're going to put five, 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 five. So we're going to put in another 4,000. Uh, so now we're putting in 14,000 and we get 17,228. So we actually get um, a little over $3,200 in interest, whereas before we got $2,700 in interest. So you can kind of see how that works. So we can model this in two different ways. Um, so we can do our original model like this. And in year one, just put plus 500. And then control shift right, control R, fill that across. 17,228.40, 17,228.40. If you don't like doing it in one step like that, you can do it like this. Um, uh, where we have two lines. And so we're going to put 
an extra um, 500 in each time. Okay. So let me just run a string of these out. Oh, too many. <laughs> and then uh, we can just uh, add that and then drag over. And it'll end up at the same place, 17,228.40. Okay, so you'll see instead of 10,310 here, 10,810. So 500 more because we've added that $500. And then that gets compounded again. So when you grow it by the 1.031, it's now growing 10,810 instead of 10,310. So the interest is going to be just a little bit higher, plus another 500, um, and so on and so forth. So it builds the compounding in. Uh, but that's basically how the, the equals FV um, works. You can also do it with um, payments that are, you know, negative pay in first and then positive payments where you're actually taking money out and things like that. You can do a bunch of different um, things. So that would be more like an annuity. Um, but I don't want to show you all of those things today. Um, but anyway, that's how the, the FV formula works is just plugging those four inputs in. And then this is what the, the cash flows look like. And we'll do that in class if you're one of my students. So uh, look forward to that, I guess.